Uh, James Rolfe, the Angry Video Game Nerd, came out with a video um, about a week ago. May 16th, recording on the 24th. Okay. Um, simply stated, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ghostbusters review, I won't. And in it, he goes through his reasons as to why he uh, has no interest in seeing the new Ghostbusters reboot. Um, he details all of his reasons in what I would consider an articulate manner. Um, I'm going to throw this out there very quickly. Uh, never uh, at any point is it stated that the fact that the cast is all female is uh, one of the reasons that he doesn't want to see it. Um, and he was destroyed uh, by all sorts of people and all sorts of media as um, being closed minded I think uh, both sides uh, both you know the the, the, the for and the, the against the PC and the feminism and things like that uh, tried to use James uh, to further their own agenda using this video um, and what it comes down to for me is uh, a that's horseshit I think he had a giant target on him uh, based on the fact that he is a, a big pop culture figure, uh, what people like to refer to as a gatekeeper. And you have a pop culture gatekeeper coming out and saying firmly with his foot down uh, in a way that I think some people may have misinterpreted, uh, saying that he doesn't have any interest in it. And I, I, I have no choice but to defend this guy. I really don't see what the the problem here is and the reason is is I, I see quite a bit of myself in 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 the way he discusses this. Um while I don't necessarily agree with all of his points for not wanting to see this movie, I don't believe that we need a passing of a torch. Uh I don't necessarily believe that the CG from the original Ghostbusters holds up as well uh as he may think, although I love well, practical, practical effects. I, I love practical Some do. effects. Like, no, they do. holds up. Sure. He does. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just, I'm saying, I love practical effects, but that's not going to appeal to everyone. Sure. Okay. Um, but his points and his thoughts are his own points and his own thoughts. Um, this reminds me of when I refused to, to, to play DuckTales Remastered. James is looking at something, and James is going, no way am I going to enjoy this. And these are the reasons. One thing that James brings up that I love because I'm such a stickler for this sort of thing is naming conventions. And the fact that they're just calling this Ghostbusters. Call this Ghostbusters the new generation. Or call this Ghostbusters, I mean, whatever. Call this, I mean, don't, don't steal the fucking name of the original movie when it has no connection. I think he makes a very good point that... If you're going to have cameos from the original characters in it, but they're not from the original movie in it, but they're not going to be cameoing their original characters, characters uh, it, it, it's it's pointless and it's stupid. So, at the end of the day, timing-wise, his video may not have been the best. But how is this any different than anyone else taking life experience, what they know they like? what they know they've seen, and let's remind people one more fucking time that a trailer's job is to de is to help you determine whether you are or are not going to see a movie. And James saw enough, and James said, no, I don't want to see it. There was nothing bratty about this. There, 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 there was nothing sexist about this. There was nothing even subtly sexist about this. This is a guy who likes a movie maybe too much, like I like fucking DuckTales too much or other movies too much myself, and has decided that he's not going to see it. All right, before we, I give my part, yes, I am friends with James. Ian uh, is his Max and Irma's partner. That's a restaurant. So we, we know James. We like James. James is a good person. Uh, he's treating me well. I respect him. He respects me. He bought me a beer when I looked really uncomfortable at MAGFest and talked to me. And honestly, to this day, he may not remember that, but that meant a shitload to me. I mean, that's neither here nor there, but he's I, a good fucking dude. I don't remember that. Regardless of that, I would say what I'm going to say regardless whether or not of how well I know James. So people forget that there's reasons why he did this video uh, or they don't care because, again, people had an agenda tagging him, which we'll get into. James put out this video for a few reasons. He put out this video... Because he's a big fucking Ghostbusters fan. Right. He's huge. He did a video where he went around New York and videotaped, videotaped, they don't use tape anymore, but went around and went to all the spots 
that they filmed like parts of the film. Like he found the firehouse, he found Tavern on the Green where they filmed the scene from the first movie, uh, things like that. He, he tried to find locations. He loves this film. The same way probably that I love Back to the Future. It's the closest thing I can say. Like if they made, remade Back to the Future, I'd feel probably the same way he feels about Ghostbusters. I don't have the connection to Ghostbusters that other people have. Right, neither do I. I think it's a good movie. I think the sequel is average at best. That's where I disagree with James, where James thinks the sequel is good. He said I went back and watched it and it was good. I don't think the sequel is good. And I think I'm more objective than that because I don't have this nostalgic feeling for Ghostbusters. I didn't see the original Ghostbusters probably until when I was in my early 20s. I never saw it as a kid. All I saw time. it in my late teens. I, I was not, yeah, I was I not never, one of those. I don't remember ever being on TV as a kid. That's why. I remember Back to the Future being on TV sure. and Goonies or whatever. Don't remember Ghostbusters being on TV. My main Ghostbusters uh, experience was was the excellent real Ghostbusters cartoon. That yeah. was my main experience for the most part. So he put the video out for that reason. He didn't want to deal with people asking him to review the movie when it came out. That's the second reason. The third reason was he put out a, a, a very good video recently detailing this was a setup for the history of Ghostbusters 3. He put out a video detailing I the get- long and tumultuous process of the, the actor saying it's going to get made next year. Bill Murray saying, I'm never going to do it. Now I am going to do it. Bill Murray's going to be a ghost in the movie. Blah, blah, blah. Back and forth. This movie's been in pre-production or, or production or for like 15 years. Back to like 2000, they were going to do a Ghostbusters 3. Then finally, they did the video game, which basically counted as Ghostbusters 3 because all the characters came back to do the voices. So that was the other reason why. So I was in Norway the last night when I saw Ghostbusters trending, trending on Twitter. Number one. And I was thinking, wow, the, the new trailer must have came out. But it didn't come out. What came out was James posting a video saying, I refuse to do a review on it. And we've covered Ghostbusters, uh, the movie, on the on the podcast before. And our arguments was always was that don't, don't care, don't judge it because it's a female cast. Judge it because of the writing and the quality of what you see, which we've done. And the first trailer came out, and honestly, I wasn't impressed. No. It I- pretty much met my expectations of what I thought it was going to be. It was humor based upon... Uh, going for one-liners and humor based upon trying to one-up each other uh, to be funny, sort of SNL writing versus being funny because of the situation. Correct. A lot of the humor of the original Ghostbusters was these characters, especially Bill Murray's deadpan, what the fuck are these ghosts, getting into these weird situations that he was deadpanning through, Mm -hmm. like getting slimed and trying to deal with the techno babble of Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. And Bill Murray was sort of your conduit to that. This is ridiculous, but this is how I would react to it. That was what the humor came from. It was serious situations with these weird characters thrown into it. And from that trailer, it just looks like these over-the-top funny characters. That That's not how the original... That's not the tone of the originals were. The, the, the originals could have been horror movies with different characters playing those parts. And if it was written slightly differently, that you could have said that could have been a horror movie. That's what was so, at least about the first one, that I think was so unique about that movie. And it, why, it wrote a very fine yes. line, but definitely in the end was comedy. Yes, but it was lightning in a bottle. And the sequel was just sequelitis to me, and it was just, okay, we'll get, the, we'll get the characters back for this rehash story, and, you know, it doesn't have the magic of the original. So, what happened was, unfortunately, and it started with Patton Oswalt. Now, there's a backstory to Patton Oswalt's wife died a few weeks ago. And supposedly, in some capacity, she's involved with the with this film. I don't know if she has a cameo or if she helped write it. I don't know. It's it's sad. It's sad that someone's wife dies tragically. But Patton Oswalt really is what set this off when he tweeted uh, kind of a nasty sort of attack on James, a, a non sequitur, sequitur. And from that, it got picked up from Samantha B. and from other uh, people I saw tweet. I was like, holy shit. And, and all of a sudden, you have people writing articles about how James is sexist uh, and how, you know, uh, he, he, he's, he represents all the misogynists and all the nerd culture. And obviously, they see James, they see a guy with glasses, and he does a character called Angry Video Game Nerd, but that's a character. Yeah. He's acting yeah. in that. That's really not how James is. James is soft-spoken. Incredibly soft-spoken. But he's very nice, and I would not call him a nerd by any means. He's got a fucking heavy metal tattoo on his goddamn arm. He loves heavy metal. You know, like, he's not what you would call a nerd. But to these people, like you said, they see him, and to him he's a gatekeeper. He's a he's the biggest uh, quote-unquote celebrity so far who said, I'm not going to see this movie. Again, didn't state because it was women. It was because, he, we, for reasons we stated, it just didn't look interesting to him, and he loves the franchise. And so people go after him. So... What I'm going to say is this, and this goes this goes into a larger discussion about 
if you want to have diversity, more diversity in film, more female leads in action movies, that's fine. Um, if you want to attack people that don't agree with that, which I think is silly, which we'll get into why in a second, because there's been there's been a decent amount, not a lot, but a decent amount of movies with female action leads that done well in the past 15 years, which we'll get into. Some not so much. Go after the people that actually you should go after. And don't cherry pick someone to sort of push and move your agenda along thinking that here's the biggest target, let's go after him. Patton Oswalt even said that, I picked the wrong target. Didn't apologize, which he probably should have, but said, I picked the wrong target. Yeah, because it's not James. It, 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 it's, it's unfortunately now you have... You have both sides. You have the the ultra hardcore feminists who are attacking James and saying that it's sexist, but you also have the complete opposite side that is trying to use them as as a banner. But he's not the one. I mean, he's so he's so far out of the loop on this shit that he shouldn't have ever been brought up in in, in these terms. Sure. And then you have to deal with articles like uh, Devin Faraci wrote an article, and he's on one of these fucking film sites. I don't want to promote. Uh. But he his article this makes me sick to my stomach, uh, entitled "The Soft Sexism of Hating on the of, on the New Ghostbusters." You don't have to be sexist to, let, to to dislike the movie, but it helps and basically just rips into James in this article as the 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 model of here's a guy who's who's not really he doesn't think he's a sexist but really is the quote unquote soft sexism. Um, this is what I'm going to say to that, uh, uh, Mr. Faraci, you make me sick. If I ever meet you, I'll say that to your face. Um, if you want to go after someone who says I don't want to see this movie because it's women and it looks like there's abject sexism that's fine uh, but when you get into this whole weird realm of I'm going to say what you really are even though you didn't say it or I know what you're thinking even though you may or not be thinking of it that's fucking scary Yeah, and that's where we're at though unfortunately where it's this really weird Orwellian reality where you not only have to watch what you say, you have to watch what might people might perceive you to be thinking, even though you're not saying it. And that's fu- that fucking scares me. And it's unfortunate someone like James got caught up in that mindset where he became a, a lightning rod. Uh, you said both sides. I, well, I'm sure people defended him, but people smeared him online. People fucking straight out smeared him and straight out fucking libeled him online. Oh, no, there's plenty of people who defended him, too, but I'm just saying most of it was smearing. Um, yeah. The people who defended him, unfortunately, were not, uh, A, the right type of people who would do would whose defense would be any good, or, sure. or they weren't big enough. Um, what, what bothers me so much about that article is this complete disconnect and inability to realize that th- so much shit has been whipped up over this movie because of female leads on both sides, people going at it, that it's been completely forgotten that someone might just really care about a movie franchise and not like the direction it went in. Sure. My biggest my biggest pet peeve originally was that it wasn't a sequel. And I, and I figured if you're going to do this properly, and this is one of the things that James says, if you're going to do this properly, you have to at least connect it. You have to give the original fans a reason to go see it. So put cameos in, or at least have it in the same universe. Sure. To pass the torch. At least do that. I don't I don't know that there needs to be a whole origin story to the new team, but put it in the same universe. Same universe. Yes. Acknowledge it. Because now, when you see th- they're in a firehouse again, they have the same hearse, they have almost the same outfits, they have the same dynamic of the four characters. When you, when you do reboots... Usually when you do reboots, it has to happen... Traditionally, reboots happen when it's been so far in the past that the generation before doesn't know about it or care about it. Or the previous movies were fucked up so badly that you have to redo it. Right. For example, the new Spider-Man is going to come out because the last one's underperformed and Marvel wants to do it. With Ghostbusters, there was no reason to reboot it. No. You either do a, a soft sequel or you just keep it in the same universe and that's what people. that's what everyone wanted. This isn't what people wanted. That's why people are upset about this first and foremost, in my opinion. The, 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 the female characters is secondary to the fact that this is not what people wanted for their franchise. That's just the bottom line. So what you come down to is when you, when you, when you throw someone... The people that attack James were the worst enemy in this case 
because they're attacking someone that probably they agree with them. Well, this isn't my Ghostbusters. I'm not. I don't want to see this. You're attacking someone who represents their views, and now you're seeing him being smeared unnecessarily. You're gonna see the movie. You're not not only if you're on the if you were on like me who was on the fence. You're not gonna see it now. You're not gonna give a shit about it now. And now you're gonna revel in its failure because bef because people on the fence like me see something like this that before you thought the movie was gonna fail or now, but now you're gonna enjoy it because these people are gonna be taken down a peg after this. Well, so they're their own worst fucking enemy and getting and getting this being a success, which is unfortunate because you can do good action comedies. I know it's possible with female leads, but after this fails, it's going to be far less likely for, likely for them to be greenlit in the future. So they worked against their own their own goals here. Right. It was it was a bridge too far. Well, and the other thing was, I, I did see people picking fights with James on this who uh, fully admitted that the movie looked like crap and they had no interest in seeing it. So, what are you disagreeing with him for? This is going to come out underperform. Uh, you're not going to hear of a sequel. Uh, you'll you'll probably think of it. They'll probably reboot it or do a male cast or something in five years, and you'll see it. You'll see it come out then. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen at that point? Or they'll just can it entirely. That's what's going to happen uh, because. It's just a weird situation. It's really weird. I feel bad for James uh, about it, but honestly, he probably doesn't give a shit that much, and nor should he. No, he probably doesn't. Because it's just the uh, the absolute last guy that I wanted to see something like that happen to. And it's funny because uh, they they totally piggybacked off it because the next day after this video came out, they released the second trailer, which yeah. was an improvement, but it still doesn't mean it's going to be a good movie. I you know, seen because it. the word on the street is, and it's not even that. It's not even really alleged or really rumor is that uh, there was strife on the set of this movie mm -hmm. that the stars uh, had these this weird sort of well I need to get just as many funny lines as you did and which is never what you want to hear for a comedy. So nothing organic because, about this because whatsoever. comedy is all about chemistry and being organic and having a. Uh, straight men for some jokes versus others and when you fight for number of jokes it does become a bad SNL sketch at that point so you hear you hear those rumors which it sounds like even the director I hear it's not even here I mean it happened he, he, he lashed out on people on tw at Twitter at some point um, and then Melissa McCarthy behind the scenes reportedly was very upset about how the movie went and she was supposedly was a very big uh, big fan of the cartoon series and really wanted it to be a success and supposedly is, was not happy about how the movie w went along. So when you have the stars not happy about it, it doesn't bode well, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to see what happens here. But again, I didn't touch on it. I just want to say this real quick about, about people being against female action stars. There's been very successful uh, movies with female action stars the past 15 years. You, you're up to the fucking sixth or seventh Resident Evil movie coming out, for God's sake, with a female lead. Angelina Jolie was probably, arguably, the, the top three biggest action stars for like a six, seven year span in the early 2000s. Tons of action movies. Some of them I thought weren't that good. I thought Salt was terrible. Bad, bad plot. But you know what? She was a variable action star. So I don't think men are against female action stars. It just has to be the right story. And for this, this is sort of the... The weirdest situation you could have gotten, I think, to, to make it a, a all-female cast over a pre-existing property that people were already touchy about and waiting for a sequel to come out for the last 15 years and being and having their, their uh, hopes dashed entirely by not having the original cast back. So so for a situation like this, I don't think you could have picked a worse project uh, to, to try to do this with. That's just my opinion, and that, I think, feeds into it. 